Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. My name is Claire Gilpin, and I'm a rising senior student in the Master's Entry Program in Nursing at University of California, Irvine. I'm going to talk to you briefly today about the concept of structural violence with the overall goal of introducing you to the term and some of its implications, particularly for women's health. The term structural violence dates back to the 1960s peace research work of Norwegian scholar Johan Galtung, and it can be thought of as violence that is experienced by individuals or groups of people as a result of social, political, or economic structures. So unlike direct person-on-person -person violence, where there is an identifiable actor committing the violent act, structural violence is embedded in societal structures, and there is no direct individual perpetrator. Now, it bears stopping here for just a moment to clarify why the word violence is in quotations. This is because when we think of the word violence, it's all too easy to limit our mental picture to acts of physical violence, whereas here, violence is a more broad term. In structural violence, violence refers to the harm done to victims. And this harm may manifest in physical violence, but it may also manifest as inequities in access to resources. From the perspective of women's health, it is important to understand this concept because women are often the victims of structural violence. And because structural violence can impact access to resources, it can create healthcare disparities that we then see in our patient population. So for the remainder of this presentation, we'll cover some of the defining attributes of structural violence, discuss the well-known problem of disproportionate maternal mortality among African-American women, which offers a relevant, tangible example of structural violence, and we'll end with the consequences of structural violence and steps for the healthcare field. As we mentioned on the previous slide, one of the defining attributes of structural violence is that it has no direct actor but rather it's built into the construction of society in social, political, and economic structures that stoke inequities. Additionally, structural violence will result in damage to its victims, even if they are unaware of their victim status, and it does so through this enduring pattern of inequitable treatment. For example, we can look at the continued presence of social inequities such as sexism and racism as broad examples of manifestations of structural violence. There is a continued battle for equal pay between men and women for equivalent work, and persons of color still face both overt and covert displays of racism in the United States. One more specific example relevant to women's health in the state of California and across the U.S. that paints a stark picture of structural violence is the disproportionately high rates of maternal mortality for African American women. According to California statistics from 2000 to 2013, African-American women were nearly four times more likely to die from childbirth-related complications than their white counterparts. This may be down to the systemic racism that is still present in our society and may impact access to pregnancy-related health care, either through the overt dismissiveness of providers or via socioeconomic barriers that unevenly affect African-American women. From the perspective of health, the consequences of structural violence can be quite dire. Structural violence impacts physical health, both acutely, as was seen in the discussion on the previous slide, and through higher rates of chronic illness with poorer outcomes. Structural violence can also impact socioeconomic status, which has negative downstream consequences for both health and safety. Research into the manifestations of structural violence gives us a platform from which to advocate for policy changes that target structural barriers to accessing equitable health care. Additionally, as medical anthropologist Dr. Paul Farmer has said, there is a need for a broader education in healthcare about structural violence and its impacts, and there is a need for bridges to be built between the healthcare community and those poised to intervene directly on structural factors. So in this brief presentation, we've only just scratched the surface of understanding structural violence, but I hope that you have found it helpful and I appreciate your attention.